Hello and welcome back to the final video in our bow and arrow series. In the last video, we pretty much wrote out 98% of the functionality for our bow. And in this video, we're hopefully going to get through all the functionality we're going to need in our arrow and then we'll be done. So let's jump to it by opening both the arrow and the bow scripts. And our arrow script is going to be pretty basic. It's going to control the physics of the arrow and the direction it's looking in when it's flying through the air. So we're going to need a few variables for how fast we want it to move. We need something for the transform for the tip of the arrow because that's how we're going to be doing our hit detection. We're going to need a reference for a rigid body as well as a flag for if it's flying through the air or not. And we're also going to be tracking its last position so we can do some hit detection. And I'll go over that a little bit more as we get into it. So let's create all our variables. The first thing is going to be a public float that we're going to be calling speed and we'll initialize that to 2000. And as you can imagine, it's only a variable that's going to be holding the speed at which we want our arrow to move. Then we want to create a public transform that's going to be holding a reference to the tip of our arrow. And like I said, we'll need this for our hit detection where we're going to need the position of our tip so we can store it. And then we'll be doing a line cast between the previous point and the current position of our tip. But like I said, we'll get into that. We'll need a reference to the rigid body that's attached to this arrow. So we can apply our force. And then we need a Boolean variable that we're going to be calling is stopped. And like I said, this is basically going to track whether it's flying through the air or not. As soon as it gets instantiated on the bow, it is stopped, it's going to be set to true because it's not going anywhere. Once we launch the arrow, is stopped is going to be set to false because it's no longer stopped, obviously, if it's flying through the air. But then, once it hits the ground, we're going to be setting is stopped back to true. And we're doing this so we can manage the fixed update function because we're going to have a bit of rotation that's occurring based on the velocity. And obviously, we don't want that occurring when the arrow has been created and is sitting on the bow or is constantly running once it's hit the ground. So we have that. And then we need to be storing our last position. As well. And let's start by creating our unity specific events. So we'll have an awake where we're going to just be getting our rigid body and storing it. It's quite simple. And then we're going to have our fixed update, which is going to have a number of things going on in it. And the first thing that we're going to do is check to see if is stopped is to true, meaning if it's flying through the air or not. If it's not flying through the air, we don't want to execute any functionality below this. So we'll just write if m is stopped. And if it's currently stopped, we'll just return. So let's add a few comments here just to sort of outline what we're going to be doing. The first thing that we want to do is rotate. So we basically want to rotate the arrow into the direction that the velocity is going in. We want to do a collision check. And then we want to store the position. OK, so let's handle this rotate first. And we're going to be using our rigid body for this. So we're going to be accessing the rigid body component. And we're going to say move rotation. And what this is going to do is it rotates the rigid body to a quaternion. It's pretty simple. And the quaternion that we're going to be passing in is going to be the look rotation. So we're going to write quaternion dot look rotation. And we need to pass in two values here. One which is going to be the forward vector. So basically the vector it's going to be looking in and the vector that we basically want to use to rotate it by, which generally for this, it says, hey, give me a up vector. So for our forward, we want it to be pointing in the direction of our rigid body's velocity. So we access the rigid body and we write velocity. So basically when our rigid body begins to slow down and the sort of arrow begins to travel towards the ground, we want it to be aiming in that direction. And that's basically what this is doing. So when we're launching it, it's going to give us a decent arc effect. Because if we didn't have this, it would basically stay at the same rotation at which we launched it at, and it would look kind of weird flying through the air. And then we just want to use the up transform of our arrow to rotate it with. And that's it for that. Let's go to our collision. And I'm going to write it out, and then I'll explain it. So we're going to do having an if statement. That's physics dot line cast. And for this line cast, it's basically going to, you need to give it two points. And we're basically going to test if there's anything between them. So our start point is going to be our last position. And our end point is going to be our current 
tip position. And we're going to need to put a function here, but we haven't written it yet, so we'll get to that. And to explain why we're using a line cast is that if an object is moving very fast, if you don't have your physics update either turned up or have collision that's dynamic and always checking, it's going to pass through objects. And turning up the frequency of those physics checks can hinder the performance of your game. So one way of getting around that and having to change project-wide settings, we can use a line cast to check between the last position and the current position to see if there's anything, any colliders between it as a bit of a workaround. And what we'll do here, since we need to use a function call here, let's make that function really quick. So we need to create one that says stop. So obviously if we've collided something, we want the arrow to stop. And we'll need to create another one while we're down here, which will be our public fire. And we'll be passing in a pull value. And if you remember from the last video, this is the function that's gonna be called from our bow. So let's go back up and finish our fixed update. And to reiterate on this line cast, if there's something in between these two points, then we want to call our stop function. And then we want to store our last position. So we'll say m underscore last position is equal to our tip position. And that's everything for our fixed update. Let's scroll down here so we can have a better look at our stop and our fire functions. And our stop function is going to be pretty simple because obviously when we want to stop, we're going to want to set our is stopped variable to true. So m is stopped is going to be true. And then we need to edit some settings on our rigid body. So we're going to go to our rigid body. I'm going to say is kinematic. And this is basically saying, are there any other physics that we want to affect this? And once we stopped, we don't want anything to be able to mess with it physically. So we're gonna set is kinematic to true. And then we're gonna to want to set the use of our rigid body for using gravity to false. And then we're gonna kind of do the opposite within our fire function. So if we go down here, we'll set m is stopped to false. Because obviously once we fired our arrow, it's going to be flying through the air, and it's no longer stopped. We're going to want to set the transform of the arrow, or the parent of this arrow, to null. So it'll be no longer attached to the bow. So we'll set that to null. And then we want to edit our physics, much like how we did previously. So we have our rigid body again. Is kinematic is going to be false. And our use of gravity is going to be true. And then once we have the settings for our rigid body that we want, we need to add a force to it. So we'll get our rigid body again, we'll write add force. And as you can imagine, this adds a force to a rigid body. Imagine that. One thing to take note of is that there are some different force modes that you can apply, whether it's an impulse or a constant, depending upon if you want it to just happen once or over a period of time, but we won't need to mess with that at all. We'll only want to add a force using the transform.forward of our arrow. We're going to let it basically add force so it goes forward. And then we want to multiply it by a few values. Obviously we want our arrow to be affected by how far back we have our bowstring pulled. So we're going to be using our pull value. And we'll be multiplying that by our speed. And our speed in this case is almost like our sensitivity is another way of thinking about it. So if it's moving a little bit too fast or you want it to move faster, you can update the speed value. And that's it for that. And to sort of keep our scene clean, I'm going to be adding a bit of a destroy with a five second delay. And you don't have to do this, but it works pretty well. We want to destroy this game object after five seconds. And this is just a bit of automatic scene management where we don't want to worry about having too many errors within our scene if obviously we don't need them. But at the end of the day, it isn't entirely necessary. And believe it or not, that's everything for our arrow script. So we need to add the fire arrow. We need to update that function within our bow with the fire function within the arrow script. So let's add that. So let's go to our bow script. We'll scroll down here. We're gonna go all the way down to our fire arrow, which we had that to do from the last video. We're going to delete that and we'll write m underscore current arrow dot fire and we'll pass on our pull value. 
And that's it, it's actually not a whole lot for this video. And since we basically set up everything in the last video, I don't think there's anything else we need to do in the scene. So let's go back in Unity just so we can double check. So let's go to our camera rig, since our bow is childed to that. We'll click on our bow. Make sure we have a reference to our arrow prefab. Our grab threshold looks good, and our start end and our sockets are all set. And then let's look at our input. We have a reference to our bow. We have for our opposite controller, the right hand anchor, since I have the bow in my left hand. And I have my controller set to the right touch. And I think that all looks good. I'm gonna build this out to my Oculus Go and see if it works. But actually, we need something to shoot at. So let's create a quick primitive so we can do that. Let's collapse our camera rig. We'll create a 3D object. We'll make it a capsule. And we'll put it five in the Z. And then I believe we just need to move it one up. And that looks good. And I actually almost forgot we haven't looked at our actual arrow prefab yet. And since it's not in the scene, we'll need to access it through our project window. So if we go over to our prefabs folder, we'll click on our arrow and we'll open it up because we need, do need to set the tip for our transform. Well, it's already set, which may have happened for me since this is based on the original project, but you'll just need to drag in the tip over here and put it into the transform. And that's pretty much it. Let's go back into our scene view and let's build this out. And as you can see here, we can pull back on our bow, we can fire the arrow, and then the arrow will get stuck in either the ground or the target that we set up. And that about does it for the basic bow and arrow series. I'm thinking about potentially adding on to this in the future with different effects or maybe elaborating on the targets a little bit, who knows. But if you have any suggestions or you have any problems, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.